Valorant is the fastest growing esport in the world. With Sentinels vs Gen G in Madrid reaching a new record of over 1.6 million live viewers, there's no doubting its incredible growth since the game's release. Maybe you watched that match and really enjoyed it. Maybe you didn't, but you know who Tens is and that he's really good. Maybe you've seen some weird new skins in your Valorant games and wondered what they are. Or maybe you've never even played Valorant. Wherever you're coming from, this video is everything you need to know to understand exactly how Valorant esports works, where to start getting into it, and what makes it so great to watch. So let's get right into it with some general things. If you've genuinely never played Valorant before, I'd recommend doing so if you want to get fully into the eSport, just to get used to the characters, maps, and general gameplay mechanics. But if you already know how regular Valorant works, pro Valorant matches are pretty similar in terms of the rule set. Each map is first to 13 rounds, with each team playing up to 12 rounds on attack and defense. If the map reaches the 12-12 scoreline, it goes to overtime, and the first team to get a two-round lead wins. Almost all pro Valorant matches are a best-of-three map series, so whichever team wins two maps first takes the game. But in major finals, like in Sentinels vs Gen G, it becomes a best-of-five. They decide which maps to play using a pick ban system, where each team bans a map and then they pick from there. But let's use an example to see how these concepts look in an actual match, like this match between Sentinels vs NRG. Before the match began, they did map picks and bans. Sentinels banned Breeze and NRG banned Bind. Then they picked the first two maps, Sunset and Ascent. Then they each banned one more map, leaving Split as the middle ground and the final map of the series. On Sunset, the score got to 12-12, and so we went into overtime. The rounds went back and forth until it reached 16-14 to Sentinels, so they took map one. NRG then won their own map pick of Ascent 13-10, which meant the series was tied at one all and went to split. Sentinels then dominated that map 13-3 and won the series 2-1. So hopefully that example has shown you how the pro games work at a basic level. But now that's out of the way, let's talk about how Valorant's esports system actually works. The VCT, or Valorant Champions Tour, is Valorant's esports system. It's a year-long season of games played by teams across the world and where pro players show their skills at the highest level. It's made up of two tiers, Tier 1, where all of the best players and teams play, and Tier 2, where players fight to reach that Tier 1 level. Most of this video will focus on Tier 1, which is what most people mean when they say VCT. In the VCT season, there are three major events, where the best teams from every region fight to crown the new best team in the world. The first two are both Masters events, international tournaments that show us who's currently on top of the Valorant scene. They usually have 8 or 12 teams attending, and are held in various cities across the globe. In 2023, we had Masters Tokyo, which was won by Fnatic. In 2024, we've had Masters Madrid, which sent was won in March, and Masters Shanghai, which will happen at the end of May. They're always super interesting tournaments, with top level gameplay and loads of storylines. If you want to follow VCT more casually, it's a good idea to watch Masters when it's on. But the third and final major event of the year is Valorant Champions. Champions is basically the world championship, winner takes all, name in the history books type thing. It's always a huge event, with 16 teams, packed live crowds, and promotion through the roof with a yearly anthem being released and a limited edition skin bundle in the game. Champions is the Valorant event to watch, as not just a fan of VCT, CT, but a fan of the game in general. 2023's Champions event was held in LA, where evil geniuses completed their miraculous underdog story in front of a crowd of 15,000. 2024's event will be held in August in the Korean capital of Seoul, so definitely make sure to tune in. But how do we decide which teams go to these big events? Well, that's where the international leagues come in. VCT has four international leagues, Americas, which is North and South America, EMEA, which is Europe, Middle East and Africa, China and Pacific, which is the rest of Asia. Each league is a regional battleground where teams fight for a coveted spot at a Masters or Champions event and to represent their region on the global stage. The format for these leagues varies each year, but usually there are two splits across the year, during which each team in the league plays once or twice a week. These splits culminate in a playoff bracket, where the top teams from the regular season face off in high stakes games to clinch a ticket to an international tournament. But who are these teams? Valorant Esports entered a franchise-like system in 2023. Riot actually pays teams to be in the league and hand-selected 40 esports orgs they thought would be reliable and help the VCT to grow. If you've heard anything about Pro Valorant before, you might recognize teams like Sentinels, the first ever and most recent as of this video, Major Winners, or Fnatic, the team who made the iconic 11-3 comeback against Loud to win the greatest match of Valorant history or even PaperX, the uncrowned kings of Asia with arguably the most unique playstyle in esports full stop. Maybe you've heard of players like Tens, Boaster, Jing, Ye, Demon1 or even Benji Fishy, all of which you can watch represent their teams in the international leagues. As for which league you should watch, it's really up to you. Americas is known for its cracked individual players, along with some drama and trash talk to spice up the games. 
Europe is a strategically deep region, with strong local fan bases like that of Carmen Court and Koi. Pacific is still waiting for its first trophy, but they never failed to deliver an entertaining match with some crazy moments. And China's International League was only added this year, so they're still figuring out their identity, but you can bet they'll do everything they can to challenge for a major title. You can watch only your home region's league and support their teams at the global events, or you can try and watch all four. Not an easy task with Valorant's intense schedule, but there are a few people who manage it. If you've got a specific team you want to support, you can just tune into their games. And if you haven't yet, you can watch this video to get a rundown on every team in VCT. And with 40 partner teams, there's definitely at least one you'll enjoy watching. But taking a look at the leagues in 2024, you'll notice that there aren't 10 teams in each league. There's 11. And that's where Tier 2 comes in. The Tier 2 circuit is pretty complicated, so I won't go into it fully here. But here's what you need to know. There's over 20 leagues and hundreds of teams throughout the world competing in them, all to make it to their region's Ascension tournament. Ascension pits the best tier 2 teams in each major region against each other, and whoever comes out on top gets promoted into their international league. It's basically a promotion system, where a new team gets added into each league every year, and that can create some great stories. 2023's Ascension winners were The Guard in Americas, who then became G2, Gentlemates in EMEA, Dragon Ranger Gaming in China, and Bleed in Pacific. Ascension will happen after Champions this year in September, and it's great to watch and see a preview of the new teams for the next year. You might have also heard of Premier, Valorant's in-game tournament client. The top divisions of Premier do feed into the Tier 2 leagues, so if you think you're good enough, make a team, win some games, and maybe you'll make it into a Tier 2 league. And if you're really good, into Ascension. And if you're really good, maybe even into the Tier 1 International Leagues, up against the best players in the world. Valorant has tried to really connect the game to the eSport, whether that's through Premier like I just mentioned, the eSports hub where you can see all the upcoming matches, and even the VCT team bundles where you can rep your favourite team in-game with a classic skin, player card, gun buddy and spray. You might have seen them around in your games. Some of them look seriously cool, like Paper X's, Leviathans and Gentlemates. Half of the money from each bundle goes directly to the team, so if you want to support the scene, that's the best way. The easiest way to find VCT matches to watch is by using the eSports Hub in-game. It will show you every Tier 1 match happening across the world, and you can just click to open the game in your browser. It doesn't show you much other than that though, so if you want to see game stats, look at past matches, or see what Tier 2 games are on, VLR.GG is the place to go. It will show you past results and upcoming games, and you can click on them to view stats, like the scoreboard and round counts for each map. VLR also has a forum, where users can talk about anything to do with the VCT. Although, it's not exactly the place for serious discussion, to say the least. The r slash Valorant competitive subreddit is a great hub for fans of the VCT though, and joining that should keep you up to date on the major events in the scene. Another source of VCT news is Tactical Rob's YouTube channel, where he uploads daily videos going over everything that's happened, whether that's match results or roster moves. I'm still wondering how he managed to do one every day during the off-season. There's some other great VCT content to check out too. Plat Chat is a podcast run by some of the VCT casters, with a perfect balance of analysis and memes. Channels like Thinking Man's Valorant and Aaron make great videos going deep into the strategy of matches and the unique playstyles of different teams, and if you want to catch up on some of the best stories and moments from Valorant's history so far, I think my channel is a good place to start. But a lot of VCT content comes from watch parties, where streamers watch the games live, which can add a different flavour to the regular broadcast. Tarek is the biggest co-streamer, and is great for good vibes and jokes. Sliggy is a former tier 1 coach, so has a more analytical look on the game and a super chill stream. And if you want some insights from former players, FNS and SOM always tell interesting stories and are absolutely hilarious. Everyone I've mentioned in this video is linked in the description below. Give one of them a try next time you tune into the VCT. And if you've watched this far, I'm sure you're excited to get into it. Consider this your official welcome to the VCT. I'm sure you'll enjoy your stay. So all that's left to do now is open the game, see what matches are on, and tune in. And with that, I've been Commend. Subscribe if you enjoyed. And thank you for watching.